Solana is currently sitting at just above $140. So is now a time to buy or is now a time to sell? A lot of FUD's been going around on Solana, including that a lot of the transactions are botted, including that the e uh, ETF is going to get denied. And so a lot of people are running for the hills, but it might actually be a pretty good time to pick up Solana if you're looking to get exposure to one of the top layer one protocols in our space. We're going to talk about the ETF approval odds. We're going to talk about open interest. And of course, we're going to take a look at a Solana chart. And while we're only $8 away from a premium buying zone, are you willing to wait? Are you going to scoop some up now? Let's jump right in. So yesterday, we shared the news on our live show that the SEC has essentially uh, removed those 19 B4s from the CBOE, which was the first step in getting a Solana futures listed on its road to the ETF. So this headline article here from the currencyanalytics.com, Solana ETF faces major setbacks, SEC secure, security concerns delay the approval. Now, if you remember, this was back in June of last year, the SEC in a slew of their Wells notices, not sure exactly which one because they had so many of them, they designated Solana as a security, a decision that has since complicated the process for firms seeking to offer a Solana ETF. The SEC's concerns about Solana security status have prompted the regulator to withhold the critical 19B4 uh, forms from the Federal Register. Now, there is one company that is still bullish on getting a Solana ETF approved, and that is Van Eck. As this uh, headline article reads, still confident on Solana ETF approval despite the red flag. This is from Matthew Siegel. Uh, some have noticed the 19B4 for Van Eck. Solana ETF has been removed. Remember that exchanges like NASDAQ and CBOE file rule changes to list new ETFs. Issuers like Van Eck are responsible for the prospectus. Ours remains in place. So they still have some hope as to the ETF getting approval. And there is one thing they're pointing to, and that is Van Eck, of course, of why they're so confident of an approval for a Solana ETF. And this is it right here. A 2018 fraud case <clears throat> could hold uh, the key to Solana ETF approval, says the Vanek executive, Vanek's head of digital asset research, Matthew Sigel, recently wrote on X that his firm still believes Sol is a commodity. That is a question at play here. Is it a commodity or is it a security? The SEC seems to think it's a security, which is why they're seemingly trying to block the Solana ETF. There's a quote from um, a quote from Matthew. This belief is informed by evolving evolving legal perspectives where courts and regulators have begun to recognize that certain crypto assets may function as securities in primary markets, but behave more like commodities in secondary markets. Uh, Matthew referred to a six-year-old now closed court case against my Bitcoin, a fraudulent crypto payments company. The commodities, uh, so CFTC charged the firm's founders in 2018 were fraudulently selling customers a my Bitcoin token and lying about its usage and value, saying it breached the Commodities Exchange Act. The defendants attempted to dismiss the case, arguing that the my Bitcoin token was not a commodity because futures contracts that reference it do not exist. However, the judge rejected the argument, noting that my Bitcoin is a virtual currency in the same way that Bitcoin is, making an analogy with natural gas. This was enough. For the CFTC to allege that this coin was a commodity. So they're pointing to this court case and saying, we've kind of already been through this. Uh, although the, the team, the My Big Coin team, was trying to prove that it was not a commodity, the judge came back and said it actually is a commodity. So if a coin that I haven't heard of until I've read this article, I'm sure you haven't heard of either, uh, was labeled a commodity and it was fraudulent, why would the second most valuable layer one in the entire space? that has a booming ecosystem, that has tons of developers, that has a foundation, that has DAOs, not be labeled a commodity as well, a little strange. Now, this is what is giving Matthew Segal and the people at Van Neck uh, hope that the ETF will get approved. Uh, outside of the U.S., good things are actually happening, believe it or not. Another Solana ETF has been approved in Brazil. Now, although Brazil is not uh, the largest economy in the world, or I don't even think they're top five, they are the largest economy in South America, which is a booming region. And a lot of people are saying it's going to be the next financial tech hub center of the entire world. 
with countries like Argentina and El Salvador. We know El Salvador is more in Central America, but still, that's South America, Central America. They are leading the charge in cryptocurrency adoption. There are people living in the country. The population is adopting it as well. And you have countries like El Salvador and Argentina that are fully embracing blockchain, crypto, and Bitcoin. Now, talk about some uh, some some things that are happening that are positive. You might be looking at, hey, is now a good time to pick it up? Let's still get open interest. So this is open interest from Coinglass.com. Open interest over the last 24 hours for Solana is up over 3.7%, with a majority coming from CoinEx and BitGet. So uh, essentially... Pretty much the derivatives market, right? So people are looking to play into Solana. Now, are they going long or are they going short? Let's take a look here. This is from, again, CoinGlass, the Solana long to short ratio chart on the one hour. You can see here, um, we have been trending up since we hit a bottom uh, earlier this morning. We are currently at 56% to 43% long to short. So 56% of the positions being taken are being long positions. Now let's take a look at Solana's chart, okay? So I've had this box here for quite a while. Uh, and although nothing has happened, this is on Solana on the daily. We can see here, this is a very key level because one, when we had our initial massive breakout, this was from around $21 going all the way to 123 before we saw any significant amount of downside price action. This is exactly where price came to a head and stopped this $120 level. We came back up, retested, got rejected, broke above, consolidated within this box, and then we had another massive rally of around, from bottom to top, of around 65%. As you can see here, this box has held very strong support, including candle closes and including candle wicks. The only time it hasn't was back here, that massive uh, carry trade, the, the one that brought the Japanese markets essentially to its knees, uh, the biggest drawdown day in the in since 1987 this is the only time Solana's price went below that $120 lower bound of this rectangle here. But guess what happened? Price came right back above into this into this rectangle box and it closed there. And what happened the next day? We saw a massive 11% candle the very next day. Well, guess where we are currently consolidating for Solana. Although we are not currently inside this range of around $120 to $130, we are trading just above it. Now, this is where the whole stop trying to time the bottom. It's about timing in the market. So you got to ask yourself this question. I am $10 off from being in a premium buy zone for Solana. Am I willing to risk waiting for that absolute perfect entry of $130? Can I wait 11 more dollars to get the best possible price of Solana, or am I risking it because who knows what can happen? Can BlackRock come in and file an ETF? And we know BlackRock's track record, they're essentially the ones that put the Ethereum ETF on the map. We went from there's no way, and then two days before the deadline, all of a sudden it was getting approved, and guess who had an ETF file in? And that was BlackRock. Same thing with Bitcoin for decades, for a decade. The Bitcoin ETF was getting denied, the first one being launched in 2013 by the Winklevoss twins. And guess what? BlackRock came to play and BlackRock got the spot ETF. Could we see something like that? You know, if we see a BlackRock ETF issuance or them at least putting in an application, we know the price of Solana is going to skyrocket. It kind of did already once we started hearing rumors, once the Ethereum ETF was approved. Imagine when that filing actually comes in on top of other things that are happening on the Solana network, including... This Solana poly market rival, uh, Drift, draws over $3 million in liquidity in its initial debut. Solana-based decentralized exchange Drift Protocol has released BET, which is their uh, poly market rival. Drift's offering is set to compete with poly market as a divisive U.S. election uh, season spurs massive amounts of bets on the leading platform, is a quote from Drift co-founder Cindy Lowe. In the first 24 hours after Drift's bet prediction markets launched, We've achieved more than three and a half million dollars of total order book liquidity. Then you have a lot of people talking about, you know, Solana's inflation is high. Their tokenomics. Are, let's take a look at it, right? Solana currently is sitting at 80% circulating to total supply. Now, I do want to note there is no max cap supply. So this token is inflationary, kind of like Ethereum, unless or until more people join the network. More people use the network, more people pay fees, and then that can 
essentially become deflationary, just like Ethereum. Now, what is their inflation schedule? This has been a talk of the town for a lot of people. This is from SolanaCompass.com, currently sitting at around a 5.08% current inflation rate with a target final inflation rate of 1.5%. And I will, uh, I will link this website in the description of this video so you guys can take a look uh, in more in depth. But one other thing I wanted to show you, this unlocking of the total stake. So we have a few big ones coming up. Now, this is not to say that when these are unlocked, they're going to be immediately sold. For all we know, they could be restaked. They could be taken off the exchange and put on a hardware wallet, cold wallet, who knows. But we could expect a little bit of volatility as you and I are not the only people looking at these numbers and trying to front run what the market is going to do. So a couple of big ones here. This is on September 7th. We're going to have a little over half a million Solana becoming available and unstaked. Another 176,000 four days after that on September 11th. Uh, some of the other big ones, October 1st, 172,000 Solana becomes unstaked. And then October 7th, another 561,000 Solana. So do with that information as you'd like. I would be careful not having any over leveraged positions in the market because you never know how the markets might react. But you got to ask yourself this question. At the end of the day, do you believe in what Solana is doing? Do you believe that they're going to capture a lot of the retail investors? Do you believe that there will be one of the leaders in stable coins? We know Visa did a whole drop on them. We know they got ties to venture capital. And they're the most retail-friendly chain out there with dApps continuing to make it easier to onboard the next wave of retail users. If you believe that Solana will be the leader, if not one of the leaders, then the answer should be yes, right? $140, got up to $250 last cycle. We believe Solana can get to that seven, eight, nine hundred dollar level. If the trend continues, if they continue to onboard more people, I'm curious to know what you think about Solana's potential in this bull market. Let us know in the comment section. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.